Hello and welcome to Save vs Splurge. So in this episode I will be telling you where you can save money and where you should spend more. So let's get into it. Who is this video for? Who are you? Let's say you are new to cycling and you want to get fitter without having to spend loads of money or you want to know where it is worth spending money and where it's worth saving. Why should anyone believe me? So I have been cycling for one and a half years. I am still pretty much a beginner myself. I've had to spend my own money on lots of rubbish things really, and some good things. So I'll be telling you which ones are good, which ones are worth spending your money on, and which ones are not as good. Okay, let's get into it. So the first one we're going to talk about is the bike itself. So I have two bikes. One of them was a cheap old decathlon bike, which I really do love very much. And the expensive one is a Trek de Mane AL3. So the cheap one is about 200 pounds. The expensive one was a thousand pounds. Obviously first I bought the cheap one, which I think is what most people should do. If you're getting into a new hobby, it's a good idea to buy a cheap one just because you might not really like it. Imagine spending like a thousand pounds on a bike and using it like five or six times and then it just sits in the garage for ages. So yeah, I'd recommend definitely go for the cheaper bike. There's some advantages to this because the cheaper bike is comfy, has suspension, and it might sound like a bad thing, but it's heavy. And that means it will make your legs much stronger than a light bike. The decathlon bike I bought has suspension, so it makes it better for riding around the city if there's loads of bumpy roads and stuff like that. So honestly, the cheap bike is probably good for most people for starting out. Um, if you get really get into it, then I'd recommend definitely upgrading at some point. The advantage to the expensive bike is it has more gears and you can go fast, basically. It doesn't have the suspension on the front, so you're not bouncing up and down, losing energy like that. One thing to add is it has aggressive geometry. What that means is the seat is much higher relative to the handlebars, so you've, you've really got to be able to bend quite a lot to be able to use it unless you have really weirdly long arms like I do. So for the bike at first, I would say, yeah, save your money at first. If you get into it, then definitely invest in something better. I mean, you don't have to, but you can last for a long time on a pretty cheap bike. I did. I did lots of like 100k rides on my old bike and it was no problem, really. Okay, next up is clothes. So when it comes to clothes, you've got like normal sports clothes, which normal people wear, and then you've got the cycling specific Lycra tight fitting stuff. So when I had my old decathlon bike, I did just wear normal sports clothes, like a normal t-shirt, a normal pair of like jogging bottoms or something like that. And to be honest, it's really fine. I had no problems with that. For most people, I think riding a normal bike like that, you'll be fine, no problems whatsoever. So when you do upgrade to a more fancy expensive bike. I think that's normally the point where you should splurge a bit on some clothes, mainly because the seat on the bikes, if you look here, you can see you can see the decathlon bike has a really squidgy seat, whereas the Trek bike has a really hard seat. So at that point, your clothes will start to make a big difference. You can get away with like jogging bottoms on a softer seat, but when it gets to the harder seat on the more fancy bike, you really need some bum padding. Otherwise, you will get you will just not be very comfy. So yeah, at that point, I reckon it's probably the time to upgrade. So the cycling tops or cycling jerseys as you're supposed to call them have pockets on the back, which is very useful. You can like store your phone, your food, whatever you want in there. And it's really easy to get out while you're cycling. The normal clothes don't have anything like that. You've just got regular pockets and they are awkward to use. Um, another thing is the cycling specific clothes are much tighter, which means you're more aerodynamic, which means you get to go faster for no more effort. So yeah, that's clothes. Let's move on. What is next? So at this point, you've upgraded your bike, you've got the fancy one, and now you're thinking about whether to splurge on expensive cycling kit or just stick to the cheaper, cheap and cheerful ones. So I have used both of these ones, the budget kits and the expensive ones. And to be honest, I reckon for like 90% of people, you will be fine with the cheaper kit. The comfort is almost as good as the expensive ones. I mean, the expensive ones are, they are a bit nicer, but really the difference isn't that much the only real advantage is you get really good customer service especially with lecole that's why i'm plugging them here because that's the one i bought so yeah they will replace anything if you rip it or something like that i think more importantly with this one is the fit make sure you get something that fits well on your bottom so that's more important than spending lots of money really so just try a few on if shops let you do that i don't know normally i just buy them online so yeah try one on see which one fits best and if you find one that's really comfy stick with that no matter how expensive it is so yeah 
Summer clothes done. So next up is shoes. So you can either use your normal sports shoes, which I did for a long time, I will admit, or you can splurge on the clipless shoes. So these ones attach directly into your pedals. So you're like connected to your bike. So that means your feet won't slip out or slide around or anything like that. So this is supposed to be good for putting down lots of power and just being just feeling connected to the bike. You can also just use your normal shoes, obviously, and that's what I did really for quite a long time. So even when I upgraded to my expensive road bike, I still used my normal shoes for that for quite a while. And to be honest, it wasn't that bad. Maybe I got some dodgy looks from people thinking like, what are you doing with that bike and those shoes? But to be honest, I don't really care. But yeah, the advantages to using these are you can actually walk when you're off the bike. I would recommend if you're in a city with lots of cars, you're stopping and starting a lot, maybe you can use the normal shoes and then you can take your feet out much quicker. This is a bit of a contentious one. So up to you really. You do have to buy new pedals if you get the clipless shoes and they are a bit expensive, but eventually I reckon most people will move on to them and they're not too hard to use. If you want to see how to use them, I did actually make a video about that. So you can click that link in the top. All right, next up is a bike computer. So at this point, you've really got into your cycling and you just want to see all of your stats on your handlebars as you're riding. We've got a Magin for about 50 pounds and a Garmin one for about 200 pounds. And to be honest, the differences are not that big, but they are specific enough that if you need them, you need to go for an expensive one. Anyway, both of them will show you all your details, like your heart rate, your power, your speed, all on one screen. So that's that's the like bare minimum of what they should do. And the cheap one does that fine. But if you're wanting to upgrade, then there are some special features which only the Garmin has. Like you have a map on there, so you can use your directions. You can like plot in the route and it will tell you where to go and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Also a color screen, if that's important. It also integrates with Strava, but it's a live integration. Like both of them will upload your rides to Strava afterwards, no point, no problem, but the Garmin one will do it live. So if you're trying to take a KOM on a hill, you can see how far ahead or how far behind you are someone in real time. So that's pretty cool. But again, it's up to you really how much, how important that is to you. So I think most people would be fine when you're beginning anyway with a cheaper bike computer. I actually did this the wrong way around. I bought the expensive one first and then later on I bought the cheap one for some reason. The Magin one does actually handle a radar as well, which is pretty useful. Most um, cheaper bike computers don't let you use the bike radar as well. So a rear light. So this one is actually quite interesting. So you can always get these generic Amazon lights and the advantages of these is literally that cars can see you. There's no special features. I would say, everyone should probably have these on your bike at least at the minimum just so cars can see you i mean it's just safety isn't it at that point but if you're feeling like you can splurge on something then you can get one of these um radar tail lights they have uh the one i have is a magine l508 for about 80 pounds you can also get a more expensive one which is a garmin varia and those are about double the price and these things are cool because it shows you how far away the cars are when they're approaching from behind and how like fast they're approaching so I made a video about this as well. So if you want to see that, you can click up in the corner. So this is pretty cool. I would say if you are if you live somewhere where the cars are dangerous, I would say definitely upgrade to this. I think it's probably better to spend your money on one of these than on something else really. I think this should be something most cyclists have unless you live in the middle of nowhere with no cars around. Anyway, yeah, so I really like the machine. I would say most people definitely should get one. Okay, next up. This is when it gets interesting. So indoor trainers, I've had two of these. I had a cheap one and an expensive one. So the Think Rider X3 Pro for about 200 pounds and the Think Rider X7 Pro for about 500 pounds. So these are cool if you want to ride inside, you can use Zwift. And if you don't know what Zwift is, then check out some of my other videos. It's basically just indoor racing and it is pretty damn fun. So this is good for the winter. If you don't wanna go outside in the cold, you can just ride your bike inside anyway. The cheaper one is a wheel on trainer. And this one is where you don't take your back wheel off. You just sort of put your bike into the little holder and your tire spins the thingy and it makes it work. Anyway, that's a great explanation. The tire spins the thingy, wow. Anyway, the problem with these ones is they are super, super loud. I had lots of noise complaints. My downstairs neighbor did not like me. Let's just put it that way. So. These are fine for starting out. I used mine for a good like six months. Um, <laughs> I say that as if it's a long time, it's really not. You can definitely get a lot longer out of this. I only upgraded because I used it so much. But they are good. You can get a lot of good use out of them. 
I really do like my one. It's still sitting in my living room, actually. So, yeah, the only bad things about these are they are loud. And if you're a big guy like me, you might be able to max out the power. The highest on this one specifically is 800 watts. Okay, so the expensive one, if you fancy splurging a lot more, is the wheel on trainer. So this one is cool because you take your back wheel off and your chain attaches to it directly. So it feels much more like a real road. And also this thing will adjust the resistance if you're riding up hills or down hills in the game. So that is pretty cool. So I really do like this. This is definitely worth spending a bit more money on. And honestly, this will this is a bit of a game changer. Like if you had the cheaper one and you're thinking, is it really that much of a difference? Then the answer is yes. I would honestly recommend if you really get into your cycling, especially during the winter, then it's worth upgrading to one of these because they feel so much better. And also your neighbors will like you a lot more because you're not going to be waking up their kids or whatever. OK, so next one is the food. <laughs> Okay, so this is a bit of a weird one. When you're outside or even inside, you're doing long rides, you are going to get hungry. And for most of my life, I have eaten bananas for my bike riding food. And I had no problem with these whatsoever. The only annoying thing about taking lots of like bananas, fruit, nuts, whatever you want with you, is they are big and somewhat heavy. So they don't really fit in your jersey pocket that well. Honestly, apart from that, bananas, they are great. I love bananas. But if you want to upgrade your food, you can get energy gels. And these ones cost about two pounds each. And they're only 100 calories. And they are so expensive for what they are. But, I mean, they are that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the convenience. You just put them in your back pocket and they are tiny. You can fit like 10 of them in just one of your pockets probably. But I don't know why you'd need that many. You can just stop in a shop and buy some real food, I guess. But if you're like in the middle of nowhere doing some really long rides, then these are a good way to take lots of calories with you. Um, one thing to say is you need to find one which agrees with you. Some of these have a really horrible consistency and they don't sit with you. So they might like go right through your stomach really quickly. So that's um, something you should watch out for. So make sure you get a few of them, find one which works for you. They're very easy to eat while riding. You just take them out of your pocket, rip the top off and then, you know, drink it or suck it out of it. So yeah, they're pretty good. Would I recommend them? Honestly, not really. I bought a few packets of them and I don't really get the hype. Maybe I'll take like one or two as like a backup, but most of the time I'll just normally take regular food and like stop and eat it. But if you don't want to stop for some reason, then sure, just take some energy gels. They are so expensive though, honestly. Two pounds for one of these is ridiculous. All right, um, next up is the, oh no, that's it. That's the end, end of the video. So I will be doing another one of these when I have more experience because I am still very much a beginner. Um, I'm gonna do winter clothes because it's starting to get cold here. So I've got a shipment of some nice cool winter clothes coming in. So I'll see which ones are good, which ones are terrible and hoping to get some new wheels and new tires soon. So exciting times for me. Anyway, if you like the video, please like, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And I appreciate it very much. All right, that is it. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.